Hi there, welcome to Tide Technician. Today we're going to be installing Ubuntu on this, the Hi5 Unmatched RISC-V development platform. I actually had a few problems during the creation of this video. My SD card died not long after I got all the software installed and started testing, so I basically had to start again. So you'll probably see that the like app launchings in a bit of a weird order and the app list changes now and again. So just ignore that, but everything was tested properly. So first up, I'm going to download the Ubuntu image for the Hi5 Unmatched. The best place to start is the RISC-V page on the Ubuntu wiki that contains all the links we need. I'll put the links to any websites and programs that we use during this video in the description. Click on the link in the Hi5 Unmatched section and then go to release. We're looking for the pre-installed server image, it's the bottom one. There isn't a standard desktop distribution available at this point, but I'll be showing you how to install the desktop a bit later on. The next thing we need to do is extract the image file. The easiest tools to use for this are either WinRAR or 7-Zip. Now that we've done that, we can insert our USB to micro SD adapter with the micro SD card in it. I'm going to use the Bellina Etcher to flash the image. You can also use Win32 Disk Imager or even the Raspberry Pi SD card maker. There's also DD if you're running Linux. Select Flash from File, then select the image that we just extracted. Select the target, which is our micro SD card. Then simply click flash and wait. I'll speed this up, it took a while. Once it's complete, we can remove our SD card and put it into the unmatched and then boot it up. I'll skip showing you the boot sequence for now, and we'll jump straight into installing onto an NVMe drive. First of all, we use wget to download the same image as we used to flash the SD card. You could also move it across on a USB drive if you'd rather. Now we'll use UnXZ to extract the image. This takes a little while and shows no progress while it's running, so I'll jump to when it's finished. Now we can find out what the NVMe drive is called with ls-l-dev-nvme-star. It's the bottom one there. NVMe 0N1. So we'll use DD to put the image onto the NVMe. IF is the input file, which is the image we just extracted. OF, or output file, is the NVMe drive. BS is block size, and also we want to show progress. I've sped this up here. Now we can use ls to check that the imaging has been successful. Because the Hi5 Unmatched always starts its boot up from the SD, we'll change the uboot options to tell it to load from the NVMe instead. We'll mount the first partition of the NVMe onto slash mnt and then chroot to it.
We need to edit the uboot config file. I'm using nano because I'm lazy. Add the line u underscore boot underscore root equals slash dev slash nvme zero one n one p one. Exit and save your changes. Then we'll run the command to update uBoot. Now we can simply exit the chroot environment and reboot. There's an issue with Ubuntu not wanting to reboot, so we're doing a halt here. I'll now show you a side-by-side -side speed comparison between booting from the SD card and the NVMe.
Now we're going to install a desktop environment, so we need to install packages using apt. We're going to install Mutter, Gnome Shell, Gnome Shell Extension App Indicator, Gnome Shell Extension Desktop Icons NG, Gnome Shell Extension Prefs, Gnome Shell Extension Ubuntu Dock, Ubuntu Gnome Wallpapers, and Gnome Terminal. I've also typed Epiphany here, but I meant Epiphany-Browser. Wait for all that to install. It does take quite a long time. I've sped this up, but there's only so fast you can go and leave it legible. Okay, now we can reboot, and then we should boot up straight into the desktop. I'll spare you the boot sequence. And here we are at the desktop. I'll just log in quickly. It does take a little while to get going, but it's okay once it's all loaded. The little white square becomes a proper mouse cursor when you first move it after logging in. I'm running at 720p here because my capture card isn't very good and I don't want to push it. It sometimes fails to capture anyway as it is. We'll have a quick look around the desktop a minute. As you can see I've got a few files in here already. No, the window moves around quite smoothly and changing between directories is quite quick. The amp launcher pops up quickly and smoothly. HTOP is showing all four CPU cores. They're not very busy. And just over 600 megs of the onboard 16 gig of RAM is in use. Let's give Epiphany another chance at Ubuntu. It didn't run very quickly in the last video, and to be honest, I don't expect it to be here either. There's no JavaScript JIP compiler for RISC 5 yet, so speed is limited on script heavy pages. Yeah, as expected, same result as on the Freedom USDK from the previous video.
Other sites, like Google here, seem to work slowly, but acceptably. You can see the Sci-5 site is actually a little slow to load, but once it has loaded, it's actually accessible at a reasonable speed. Okay, let's have a look at the hardware here. The CPU is actually a 1.2 GHz part, but it runs at 1 GHz in Ubuntu because of some bad boot configuration. I imagine this will get fixed in a future release. I'll just do a quick scroll through some of the other sections so you can have a look at various things. Okay, let's move on to benchmarking. As you can see here, the performance for Bluefish sits right in between a 1.66 GHz Atom and a Turion 64X2. Moving on to CryptoHash now. That's not too bad, right between a Pentium 4 and a Pentium dual core CPU, both at much faster clock speeds. Got Fibonacci next. Looks like the performance for this test is on par with the first gen i7, that's quite surprising. And on to the N Queens test now. This one takes a little while longer to run. That's not too bad. Pretty much a match up with an Athlon 64. I'll skip showing you the Zlib test, because it takes a while to run, and there's only one CPU to compare it with. You'll be able to see the results in the background while the FPU FFT benchmark is running. Looks like we're sat between a Churion and a Sempron for FFT. On to the FPU ray tracing.
Looks like we're on par with a core 2 duo for this test. Okay, the GPU drawing test. I've sped this up quite a lot because it actually took about 20 minutes to run through. If anyone wants to see the whole thing in real time, drop me a comment and I'll upload it and link to it in the description. There we go, a result of 327.6, whatever that really means. I'm planning to do a video that goes more in depth to do with the hardware of the machine and RISC-V in general, so hopefully I'll find some better testing to run by then. I might even do a side-by-side -side comparison with something like a Raspberry Pi. Anyway, on to some testing that's a bit more interesting. I've installed a few games, so let's see how they run. First off, we'll try Monkey Island on ScumVM. A classic point-and-click adventure from the early 90s, and my favourite game of all time. Okay, next up we'll see how Doom runs. If I didn't run this, I'm sure people would be asking, but can it run Doom? You'll have to put up with my terrible playing for a lot of these games, sorry. Oh, oh. 
A step up from Doom next, Quake 1. It's actually performing a little strangely. The inputs seem to actually lag a little bit. It's a bit disconcerting. <laughs> Next one, yeah, it's Quake 2. Establish communications. Priority out. This is actually responsive. <laughs> I should probably have remapped the controls though. And for the last game of the video, Quake 3 Arena.
Thankfully, this one has a decent demo for me to show you. I did actually play this earlier, and it handles perfectly. I did try and run Doom 3, but there seems to be some problem running it on Risk 5. I'll give it another go in the future and hopefully it'll all be well. So, is Risk 5 ready for desktop use yet? No, not really. But the boards have to exist for developers to make software for it, and this is an excellent step in the right direction. I'm expecting to see a lot happen in the next six months with various improvements and stuff, and you never know, things might get much better a lot faster. If they do, I'll make another video to update you all. We'll wrap it up here. If you've got anything you want to see running on this board, leave me a message in the comments section and I'll see what I can do. As I said earlier, I'm planning on doing a more hardware oriented video soon, where I'll have a better look at the hardware of this board and more about the RISC-V architecture in general. I was going to do that as part of this video, but with the issues I had with the SD card and having to redo a couple of days of work, I didn't have the time. And this video has already run way longer than I expected it to. If you've enjoyed this video, Give us a like, comment, maybe even subscribe. We'll catch you again.